Hello chemists and welcome back to Bale's Chemistry. In this episode, I'm going to explore the reactions of the halide ions with sulfuric acid. This will start by looking at the recap of the halides, then we'll move on to consider what makes a good reducing agent, then we'll take a look at the reactions of sodium fluoride and sodium chloride, before finishing up with the reactions of sodium bromide and sodium iodide. Of course, I'll be rounding up this episode with a summary of all the key points that you need to get down for your notes. Now, this is AQA specification 2.3 halogens, and you'll find it on paper one of your final exams. This video is part of a set of videos all about the halide ions and their reactions. Click on the subscribe and the bell to be notified when the next one's online. So before we go into the reactions with sulfuric acid, let's just cover the formation of the halide ions. The halogens all gain a single electron to form the halide ions in a process that we know as reduction. Reduction is the name we give to a process where a species gains an electron, and a reducing agent loses electrons so another species can be reduced. Oxidation is when a species loses electrons, and an oxidizing agent gains electrons so other species can be oxidized. Now, when the halogens are reduced, they act as oxidizing agents, and a good oxidizing agent will gain electrons easily because it has a smaller atomic radius and less electron shielding. Now, once we've got these halide ions, we can reverse the process and oxidize them back to their atoms. Because they're being oxidized, they act as reducing agents. And this is a key property that we're interested in when it comes to the reactions with concentrated sulfuric acid. A good reducing agent easily loses electrons because it has a bigger radius and has more electron shielding. So the outer electrons don't fill the pull of the nucleus as much. Now, as the halides increase in atomic radius as they go down the group, and this is because they're each in different periods, so the electron shielding and the atomic radius increases, making iodide the best reducing agent of them all. So that's covered one part of our reaction, the halide ions, and now we're going to look at concentrated sulfuric acid. It's a strong acid with two acidic protons, so we call it diprotic. Now, it also contains sulfur in the oxidation state of plus six, and this is really important. It's going to influence how it reacts with our halides. So back to our halides then. Fluoride and chloride are very small and don't easily give up their electrons. This makes them bad reducing agents. And when they react with sulfuric acid, they react in a normal acid-base reaction. So acid plus base, where the hydrogens move from the sulfuric acid to the halide, forming a hydrogen halide. Now bromide and iodide are much bigger and much more easily lose their electrons. So they are good reducing agents. Because of this, they react with sulfuric acid in a process involving the reduction of sulfur and the oxidation of the halide ion. This is a redox reaction. Now, when we react these halides, they must also come with a positive spectator ion. And for our specification, this is always sodium. So sodium fluoride, sodium chloride, sodium bromide, and sodium iodide. Let's start by looking at the reaction of sodium fluoride with concentrated sulfuric acid. The reaction is straightforward, producing sodium hydrogen sulfate and hydrogen fluoride. Now these reactions are really exothermic, so this reaction you'll see the steamy fumes of hydrogen fluoride when it's released into the air. These fumes will turn damp blue litmus paper red, as hydrogen fluoride is acidic. The paper needs to be damp so the gas release can react with the litmus paper. Now, onto the reaction of sodium chloride. It's very similar, just producing hydrogen chloride instead. Some exam questions ask what roles the chloride ion and the sulfuric acid are playing. Now, as this is an acid-base reaction, the chloride ions are the proton acceptors or the bases, and the sulfuric acid is acting as a proton donor or an acid. In this reaction, you'll see the white misty fumes of hydrogen chloride, so it's a very similar observation to sodium fluoride. Like hydrogen fluoride, these fumes will also turn blue litmus paper red. Let's take a quick recap of where we're up to now. First, we've looked at the formation of the halides from the halogens and had a recap on oxidation and reduction. Most specifically, looking at bigger halides making better reducing agents as they more easily lose electrons. Then we've considered a comparison between smaller halides, fluoride and chloride, which are weaker reducing agents, so complete acid-base reactions, and the bigger halides, bromide and iodide, which are better reducing agents, so react with the sulfuric acid in a redox reaction. And now we've just had a look at the reaction equations for the fluoride and chloride ions involving the production of a hydrogen halide, specifically looking at the roles of each reactant from the sodium chloride reaction. And now we're going to progress onto the stronger reducing agents of bromide and iodide. Sodium bromide is where the reactions start to get a bit more interesting. The overall reaction shown here shows sodium bromide reacting with concentrated sulfuric acid. 
And in this reaction, the Br- ions are the reducing agents and the sulfuric acid is the oxidizing agent. Now, this reaction does a two-step process. And although I haven't seen an AQA exam question asking you to recall this, it's worth knowing so you can understand the individual steps and know what's going on. In the first step, we have a similar reaction to what we've just seen with sodium fluoride and sodium chloride with the production of hydrogen bromide. And in the second step, the formed HBr reduces the sulfuric acid down to sulfur dioxide. In this reaction, you'll see the brown or orange fumes of the bromine and the choking fumes of sulfur dioxide. Now to show this reaction as a redox reaction, we can see the bromine going from being minus one in sodium bromide to zero in bromine, so it's been oxidized. And we can see that sulfur goes from plus six in sulfuric acid to plus four in sulfur dioxide, so it has been reduced. The final equation for us to look at today then is sodium iodide. Now I haven't seen an exam question asking you to recall this equation, but there have been exam questions asking you to explain it and to provide half equations. I'm gonna cover these half equations in a later video. But first up, in this reaction, you're going to see the purple gas of iodine being produced. You'll also see the white solid sodium iodide changing to be a black or a gray solid. This is some of the iodine that won't have turned into a gas in the reaction. And then finally, you'll detect a bad egg smell of the hydrogen sulfide being produced. This reaction starts in a similar way to the sodium bromide, the first two steps being the same. But because iodide ion has a greater reducing ability, it reduces the sulfur all the way down to hydrogen sulfide. Now, sulfur can have four different oxidation states in the different compounds as shown here. And it's possible to make any of these sulfur-containing compounds in a reaction with sodium iodide. In the next episode, I'll explore the half equations for making each individual compound, which is sometimes asked in exam questions. Just a quick top tip then, learning the equations shown here in this episode is only part of the story. To have that really good understanding of the reactions, it's best to understand the half equations behind each step, as these are often used in exam questions. Right, let's look at all these overall equations lined up next to each other, starting with fluoride and chloride ions. Now these are both weak reducing agents, so they both react with acid and base reactions. Then we have the bromide and iodide, both of these are much better reducing agents, so they reduce the sulfur in sulfuric acid in a redox reaction. Now there's a difference between these two because iodide is a much better reducing agent. It reduces sulfur all the way down to hydrogen sulfide, where sulfur has the oxidation state of minus two. Now for our four key points from today's session, the bigger the halide ion, the better reducing agent. Sodium fluoride and sodium chloride have acid base reactions producing hydrogen halides. Sodium bromide acts as a reducing agent and reduces sulfur to an oxidation state of plus four in sulfur dioxide. And sodium iodide is an even better reducing agent and reduces sulfur to the oxidation state of minus two in hydrogen sulfide. Thanks chemists for watching this episode of Bale's Chemistry. More halogen chemistry up here. And if you haven't, click down here to subscribe to the channel.